food prepared today session we will take diabetes mellitus okay it was taken previously i will take this again we'll get the complete clear recording of it this time it will be uploaded in the rec uh, youtube channel as well okay so diabetes mellitus diabetes it is a condition that happens when your blood sugar or glucose level is too high and it stays high Okay, everyone gets the spike of blood glucose level, but how how does it fall? Okay, how does your blood glucose level fall down? Is it staying high for pretty long period? Okay, there is a spike up at a and it should there is a peak, and it should come below. Okay, and there is a time frame in which it should come down. Within two hours, your blood glucose level has to come back to normal. Okay, but if it doesn't come back to normal, it stays high. Okay, and for a prolonged period of time, it stays high. That means you're suffering from diabetes. Okay, it develops when your pancreas does not make enough insulin or any insulin at all, or when your body isn't responding to the effects of insulin. Either your pancreas are not producing insulin. Or it is producing insulin, but your body is not responding to insulin. These two cases become two different types of diabetes, type 1 and type 2. We'll discuss that in detail. Okay. So diabetes affects people of all ages. <coughs> Even children suffer from diabetes. We call it juvenile diabetes, type 1 diabetes mostly. Most forms of diabetes are chronic, lifelong, and all forms are manageable with medications and or lifestyle changes. Lifestyle changes do contribute to a healthier life for people who are living with diabetes. Okay. So glucose mainly comes from carbohydrates in your food and drinks. So it is your body's go-to source of energy. Apart from glucose, you have the other two macronutrients. We call them as proteins and fat. They also give you energy, but your body will always choose glucose first. It is easily indispensable. Okay, your glucose can get easily absorbed, easily metabolized, easily realized into the body. Okay, as compared to proteins and fat. Your body has to work a lot to get them metabolized and get energy from them. Okay, so your body's go to source of energy will always be glucose. That means carbohydrates. Your blood carries glucose to all of your body cells to use as a, use it as a fuel for energy. Your brain also depends completely on the energy that comes from glucose. No other macronutrient can fulfill the requirement of the brain for energy apart from glucose. When glucose is in the bloodstream, it needs the help of insulin to reach its final destination. Just like any other nutrients that is absorbed in the small intestine, glucose also follows the very same pathway of absorption and then getting into the circulation. But its job is not done there. The glucose has to proceed towards entering the cells as well. Only then it can reach up to the mitochondria. Excuse me. Only then it can reach up to the mitochondria and energy can be produced. One
Am I audible to her? I can't be loud today. I'm suffering from sore throat, so I can't be loud today. So in this volume, I can continue the class. Okay. So just like other nutrients, as soon as glucose enters your bloodstream, okay, it needs the help of insulin to direct it towards the cells to help the cells open its gateways to accept glucose. That is the main function of insulin, okay? In the presence of insulin, the cells will accept glucose. Otherwise, the cells will not accept glucose. Glucose will stay back in the blood and it will create other inflammatory responses, okay? So if your pancreas, isn't making enough insulin or your body isn't using it properly, which means insulin resistance, okay? Glucose builds up in your bloodstream. It causes high blood sugar and hyperglycemia. High blood sugar, the particular terminology for it is hyperglycemia. So over time, when you consistently have this high blood sugar level, when your cells are not responding to insulin, cells are not accepting glucose, okay? You lack energy because your first source of energy is being not used by your cells. You lack energy. You are eating food, but the food is not giving you energy because your cells are not regarding glucose as energy source, okay? So it gives you health problems, heart problems, nerve damage, eye issues. Because glucose, if stays in your blood for a long period of time, it will create this inflammatory response. And blood reaches everywhere. This high glucose blood, hyperglycemic blood, it will reach every system. And it will cause its in in inflammatory response there as well. So what are the types of diabetes? Type 2 diabetes, which is most common. Type 2 diabetes is the most common. With this type, your body doesn't make enough insulin. Or your body cells, your pancreas are making enough insulin, but your body cells are not responding to it. So this is the most common type of diabetes. And it mainly affects adults. And children also these days, obese children, overweight children are also at the risk of type 2 diabetes. Okay, mainly why it happens? Your pancreas are making insulin, but the body is responding to it. Type 2 diabetes starts with insulin resistance, usually. <laughs> then pre-diabetes. The stage before you get into diabetes stage. So this type of this type is a stage before diabetes. Your blood glucose levels are higher than normal, but not high enough to be officially diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Okay. So you come in the borderline category. You do an HbA1c test. That means glucose in the hemoglobin. That is a test, okay, to find out the amount of glucose present in the hemoglobin. So doing the HbA1 test will give you the approximate uh, value, okay, uh, of how your glucose response is within your body. And in that, you can categorize yourself, you will find your categorization in the pre-diabetic or diabetic, okay. Then type 1 diabetes. This is the type of an autoimmune disease. So what happens here is that your own immune system, it will start attacking your own pancreatic cells. Specifically the cells who are producing insulin. 
the insulin producing pancreatic uh, uh, cells will undergo attack here okay and this starts in early childhood that's the reason why another name for type 1 diabetes is juvenile diabetes okay. it happens in children since a young age a child may suffer from type 1 diabetes because the child's own immune system is attacking the insulin producing cells of the pancreas beta cells of the pancreas okay and why the reasons are unknown we cannot pinpoint usually genetically also these conditions are given forward to the next generation up to 10 percent of the people who have diabetes have type 1 diabetes it's not that common it's common as a rare it comes under the rare category it's usually diagnosed in children and young adults but it can develop at any age then we have gestational diabetes it happens only during pregnancy as soon as the child birth is over the mother's blood glucose level and how the um, cells respond to glucose that will also change soon after the pregnancy okay but the entire during the entire pregnancy time period from the time of conception till delivery the mother's body will behave like a diabetic body okay this type develops in some people during pregnancy Di gestational diabetes usually goes away after pregnancy however if you have gd gestational diabetes all the women who had gd naturally they have a higher risk of developing type 2 diabetes later in life that is usually diabetes in women it affects around their menopausal age but if a woman had suffered from gestational diabetes by her mid 30s late 30s she may get diabetes okay how common is diabetes 95 percent of all diabetes cases are type 2 diabetes that's the most common form around 5 37 million adults across the world they have diabetes and it is going to rise it's not going to come down if the prediction is that this will rise to 643 million by 2030 783 million by 2045 so the numbers the speculative numbers are increasing What are the symptoms of diabetes? Increased thirst. Thirst. You drink a lot of water. Even polydipsia. We call it as polydipsia in medical terminology. And dry mouth. Frequent urination. Irrespective of the climate. Usually during cold seasons, people do urinate more frequently as compared to hot climate but irrespective of the climate the frequency of urination increases fatigue tiredness because energy should come from carbohydrates you are eating carbohydrates but your cells are not allowing glucose to act as fuel okay so you don't have energy you're deprived your cells are deprived of energy that leads to overall fatigue blurred vision inflammatory response of hyperglycemic blood on your retina and your general eye health unexplained weight loss because glucose is not giving energy but the body has to survive some or the other way energy has to come what is the next option cut down the fat cells whatever adipose cells fat cells have in your body for your body's energy requirement for the survival the fat cells st stored fat cells will be taken away it will be broken down to supply energy in place of glucose so that's how you lose your weight when you become diabetic 
numbness or tingling sensation in your hands or feet, slowly healing the sores or cuts, wound healing is delayed, frequent skin or vaginal yeast infection, the pH changes. So what are the causes of diabetes? First, it starts with insulin resistance, majorly for women. So type 2 diabetes mainly results from insulin resistance. Insulin resistance means insulin is being produced by the pancreas. Your body is producing insulin, but the body is not responding to insulin. Okay, producing insulin is one side, but your body should also respond to your this hormone as well. Okay. So that is insulin resistance. Your body is resisting insulin. Okay. It happens with the cells on your muscles, fat, and liver do not respond the way they should to insulin. Many factors contribute to the various degrees of insulin resistance. Obesity is one of it. Lack of physical activity, your diet, hormonal imbalances, genetics, and other medications can also induce insulin resistance. Autoimmune disease, type 1 diabetes, and LADA happen when your autoimmune system attacks the insulin producing cells in your pancreas. So, why this immune system attack takes place, we don't know. <clears throat> We don't know yet, but the major cause of it is genetic uh, predisposition. Okay. <coughs> so, in both these conditions, both are autoimmune conditions. LADA stands for latent autoimmune diabetes of adults in both these conditions the human system is attacking the insulin producing cells in your pancreas type 1 diabetes starts at early childhood LADA starts after childhood because it is latent it's an autoimmune disease it's latent comes late and it happens in adults Latent autoimmune diabetes of adults. That is the full form of LADA. I have put it in the chat box. The hormonal imbalances during pregnancy, the placenta produces hormones that cause insulin resistance. You may develop gestational diabetes if your pancreas can't produce insulin to overcome insulin resistance. Because during gestation, gestation means during pregnancy, not many hormonal changes are taking place, and sometimes the body cannot keep up. Okay, specifically, if the mother is obese, overweight, okay, or we call it as a geriatric pregnancy in medical terminology in which mother is about the age of 30 or after 35, she, if the mother is getting pregnant, the woman is getting pregnant, these all are the risk factors in which gestational diabetes can happen, okay. So other hormone-related conditions like acromegaly, Cushing syndrome, okay, if you have these situations as well, that can also lead to type 2 diabetes. Pancreatic damage, physical damage to your pancreas. Let's say if it is a gunshot wound, stab wound, any traumatic accident in which cells of the pancreas got damaged, or you have chronic pancreatic inflammation, 
inflammation of the pancreas, which was not treated, alcoholism that lead to pancreatitis, which was not treated, it could lead to diabetes as well. Genetic mutations okay, can also cause diabetic, uh, diabetes. MODI, okay, that is one of the genetic mutation. It's a single gene mutation. Both are associated with adult diabetes, not young diabetes. Then acute diabetes complications, complications that happens during diabetes. Hyperosmolar hyperglycemic state, which, which means osmolarity, osmolarity means from higher concentration, lower concentration. The movement of anything from higher concentration to lower concentration to bring about the equilibrium, okay? Hyperglycemic means high blood glucose level, okay? So in this hyperosmolar, hyperglycemic state, usually affects the people who have type 2 diabetes. When your blood glucose levels are very high for long period, it automatically leads you into a sense of dehydration, confusion, and in this situation, a medical treatment is required. You will be admitted in the ICU. Okay, critical treatment is required. So that is hyperosmolar, hyperglycemic state. Diabetes related ketoacidosis, DKA. This complication mainly affects people with type 1 diabetes or undiagnosed type 1 diabetes. Body can't use glucose for energy. Okay, so it breaks down fat. And when too much of fat is broken down for energy requirement, there is a byproduct called ketones. Okay. These ketones accumulate in your blood and it changes the blood's pH. It turns the blood into more acidic pH. Okay. It goes into your lungs and it gives you a very fruity odor. It goes and deposits even in your brain cells and it will cause irritation, confusion, depression, etc. So in this situation as well, ketosis, ketoacidosis, you require immediate medical treatment. Okay, When too much of fat is being broken down for energy requirement, when your body cannot use carbohydrate, when too much of fat is being used for energy requirement, this is what happens. Too much of ketones are produced as byproduct and they turn your blood into acidic. They change the pH of the blood. And with that, a lot of responses will follow. Severe low blood glucose levels, hypoglycemia, because once you are diabetic, you start taking medications to control it. Okay. So sometimes if you overdo your medications or your dosage is changed, okay, if you overdose yourself with insulin, it goes, you go into a state of hypoglycemia, which means your blood sugar level drops so low that it it can affect your uh life as well okay it can it could be fatal as well specifically people who are on insulin therapy they get affected by it slightly if the dose of the insulin is more than what is prescribed to them they can go into a state of hypoglycemia so you will have double vision blurred vision clumsiness disorientation seizures sweat a lot Okay, Im immediately emergency treatment is given. Something sweet has to be given to them immediately, glucose, water. And if the patient is in emergency, glucagon will be given. 
DNS will be put there, uh, put on. Long term diabetes complication. If it is, even if it is treat, being treated or if it is left untreated, cardiovascular situations will come up <laughs> sooner or later. Cardiovascular issues are the most common type of long long term diabetes com complication. These include coronary heart disease, heart attack, stroke, atherosclerosis. Then other diseases are like nerve damage, neuropathy, we call it as neuropathy. And because of this neuropathy, after many years of diabetes, the pe uh, people who suffer from diabetes lost sensation. Uh, they will start losing sensation from the tip of their fingers. Okay, tingling sensation of pain at the tip of the fingers. Numbness, okay, it will start. Nephropathy, kidneys will start to damage. Okay, kidney failure. And they may, uh, at the end stage, they may require dialysis or transplantation. Retinopathy, it can lead to that blindness as well. Ret when the healthy retina is damaged, it can lead to diabetes, uh, sorry, blindness. Diabetic foot, a wound in the, in the foot, if you're not careful, will not heal properly and you may have to amputate some part of your foot. Okay, it produces ulcer, it becomes gangrenous, gangrene, necrosis can take place, tissue death, cell death, necrosis, bad smelling food, okay, these all are diabetic food. Skin infections that don't heal properly, amputations, as I mentioned, diabetic food, if it spreads, you may have to amputate the limb. Sexual, sexual dysfunction. Excuse me. Sexual dysfunction due to nerve or blood vessel damage to the sexual organs, such as usually in men, it could be erectile dysfunction. In women, it could lead to vaginal dryness. And also recurrent yeast infection. Recurrent yeast infection can also lead to vaginal dryness. If the pH of the vagina is also changing, it could lead to vaginal dryness in women. Then you have gastroparesis. It is a digestive condition in which the stomach muscles, they don't allow your stomach to empty properly. Okay, Usually it causes some kind of indigestion. It can affect your proper digestion as well. It can also damage the nerve that controls the stomach during digestion. So that is gastroparesis. It's kind of a paralysis pa paralysis to your stomach muscles. Hearing loss, oral health issues like periodontal disease, gum disease, bleeding gums. Coming to the diagnosis and tests, Fasting blood glucose test, one of, the, one of the most commonly prescribed tests to uh, check if you are diabetic or not for this test. At least for 12, year, 12 hours, you are not supposed to eat, drink. You can have water. You have to be on, put on fasting, which means no food, no carbohydrates at, at all. For at least 
eight hours, but you can follow 12 hours as well. 12 hours is much better, okay? Before the test, as food can greatly affect your blood or food glucose level. So this test will allow the provider to see what is your baseline blood glucose level. Even without eating any food for these many hours when you're fasting, what is your baseline blood glucose level? And then after which you can have some food and postprandial blood glucose test will be done the same day. Random blood glucose test randomly at any point of the time your uh, blood glucose will be checked. It should not be more than 150. Okay, It should be between 120 to 150. That is ideal. That is normal. Not more than 150. At, at, at least not at all more than 200. The A1C or HbA1c. So this is the glycated hemoglobin test. That is the glucose in your hemoglobin. Okay. That will be checked. So three three months from the past two to three months, how your trading, uh, how your blood glucose level was on an average, you can tally that using the HbA1c test because your hemoglobin has the memory of the past three months glucose update. To screen for and diagnose gestational diabetes, providers will order for an oral glucose tolerance test as well. So GTT glucose tolerance test, uh, same, it starts with fasting, but a, a controlled dose of glucose will be given to you and your blood, how it responds to that controlled dose of glucose for the next two hours will be noted down on the graph, okay? That is glucose tolerance test. So these are the parameters if your fasting blood glucose level uh, is less than uh, 100, it is you, you are in range, you are normal, okay, you don't have diabetes. If it is between 100 to 125 fasting blood glucose, then you are pre-diabetic. If it is more than 125, you are in the diabetes category. Random blood glucose test, nothing is available, but if it is uh, like higher than 200, definitely diabetic and you may have symptoms of hyperglycemia as well. And usually we can, nowadays we can counter it as one more than 150 as well, random blood glucose test. A1C, HbA1C, if it is less than 5.7%, you're normal, if it is between 5.7 to 6.4, pre-diabetic, Higher than 6.5 is diabetic. Coming to the management and treatment, blood sugar monitoring. Monitor your blood glucose level on a regular basis once it is confirmed that you are pre-diabetic or diabetic. To determine how well your current treatment plan is working, it will give you information on how to manage your diabetes on daily on a daily basis and sometimes even uh, on a hourly basis as well. You can monitor your levels within frequent checks with glucose meter that the random glucose meter that you have can use that as well. Finger stick also, and your healthcare provider can also determine your blood glucose level. They can they can give you the best sugar uh, test for you as well. Usually, it is GTT glucose tolerance test, fasting blood glucose level test, or HbA1c test, glycated hemoglobin level test. Then, oral diabetes medication. If you are not put on insulin, you will be put on oral anti diabetic medications, and it will help you to manage your blood sugar levels. You can still specifically, if you can still produce some insulin. If your pancreas are still producing insulin, you will be put on this medical 
medicines, diabetic, anti diabetic medications. Even uh, women who suffer from gestational diabetes may need oral medication. Metformin is the most commonly prescribed anti diabetic drug. Insulin, people with type 1 diabetes has to take insulin because their body is not producing insulin at all. So they have to take insulin. They need to inject synthetic insulin into the into, uh, into themselves to manage, to live and manage with diabetes. Some people who have type 2 diabetes, usually chronic cases, they may also require insulin. And there are different types of insulin, short acting, long acting. So depending on your requirement, your doctor will prescribe, depending on your situation as well. So it comes in syringe, short, insulin pens, insulin pumps, rapid acting, inhaled insulin. These are different forms in which this medication comes. Diet, meal planning, choosing a healthy diet for you is very important for diabetes management. Food greatly impacts your blood glucose level. So count your calories, control your portions, add more complex carbohydrates, fiber in your diet, more protein in your, in your diet, only if you don't suffer from any nephropathy, add more protein. The amount of carbohydrates that you eat determines how much insulin you need. So healthy eating habits, controlled eating habits should be practiced. Exercise regularly. Physical activity increases insulin sensitivity of your uh, body cells. It means when you're giving them insulin, your cells will start responding to insulin. So regular exercise is important. Prevention. You can't prevent autoimmune conditions of diabetes or genetic forms of diabetes, but type 2 diabetes you can definitely prevent. Eat healthy, such as Mediterranean diet, which has more uh, raw raw vegetables, the raw green leafy vegetables, raw foods. Okay, use more olive oil. Don't use more uh, like a clarified butter or regular butter. Okay, saturated fats are avoided in a Mediterranean diet. Okay. Get physically active, aim for 30 minutes a day, at least five days a week. Work to achieve a weight that is healthy for you based on your body statistics. Manage your stress. Limit your alcohol intake. Alcohol can also spike up the glucose level. Get adequate sleep, typically seven to nine hours of sound sleep. And if you have any sleep treat, uh, disorder like insomnia, sleep apnea, get treatment for that. Quit smoking if you are a smoker. Take medications as directed by your healthcare provider to manage the existing risk factors of heart disease. So these are the prevention methods. Self-exploratory. So that's all for diabetes militants class. If you have any queries, you can mention the chat box.